All right, so now that we kind of understand a little bit about how frames work and how clips are assigned to time, one of the differences in Nuke is that time is sort of absolute per clip. But again, we're working in projects that might have a random start time or a very specific start time, and we need to move things to work in that space for us. All right, so let's talk about a couple of tools we can use to modify time. So time clip is one of those. You can, you can modify a clip in its actual properties, but sometimes you don't wanna do that. And I like to use nodes where I can because it keeps everything a little more explicit. Say we change the read node out, we might still want our timing offsets to be applied to the new read that we're gonna to attach to it. So in that case, it's better to actually use a separate node. So in this case, we're gonna use time clip. And what we'll do is we'll actually create the node attached to the file. That way it'll auto fill some of the options. So here we could say, you know, start at one. And this will give us the same result as if we had started the file, if we had gone and set that expression here. This is just nice because say, say this clip gets swapped. Now when we apply the new clip, it's also starting at one. So it might not it might not have ramifications in other places because the timing changed. So that's time clip, something good to know about. It also can let you change some of your handling and it'll do some fade in, some fade out. The next one up is frame range. So frame range is exactly what it sounds like. It basically lets you set a new frame range. So even though you have the clip at a certain length that it came in as, you might wanna shrink that or grow that you know, some tools are utilizing the frame range metadata to tell the tool what frames to actually operate on. So if you're using a Kronos or, you know, retiming tools or even camera trackers or some other tools, you can use frame range to actually limit the amount of frames that it's going to try and operate on. You know, this is useful for a camera tracker if you're just working, you know, if you're working in a, in a section of a script and you only want to see a a part of it, you can go and set this to be a smaller subset. And that when you use the use that in conjunction with the input on your viewer, you'll see that now we're only viewing frame one to 20. So that's really useful from an organizational standpoint, and also just sort of limiting the exposure of frames to some of your tools. Next up is time offset. This is basically the same as the offset in the read node. This is just a tool that allows you to offset. So say you get a tool done or you're using the same clip in multiple different places, you'll use time offset as a separate operation because now you can have a long, you know, say you have an 800 frame asset and you want to use, you know, from frame 50 to 100, but you want to use another section from 300 to 400. You can use the time offset to allow you to use those in the same time. Um, and move those, move that in time to work where you want it to be in your composite. So next up, you know, time, time in Nuke is a little different than the way it works in a layer-based setup. In a layer-based setup, it's usually you drag it into a timeline, you drag and drop it where you want its timing to be. Nuke has a little bit of that. Um, and if you actually... Here, we'll split our dope sheet out into another pane so we can see the dope sheet at the same time. So say we wanted to move something, you know, everything we just did here using frame and start at an offset, you can, you have access to that via the dope sheet. So if you want to have a little more of an interactive drag and drop, you can slide files around and you can actually see the offset changing as we move this. You can also grab the ends and shrink them. So you have a little bit of a NLE style editorial option here. You know, if you have multiple clips too, you can see, you know, this is living way, way out over here. You know, you can grab it and drag it in line and do some alignment visually in the dope sheet. And if you select multiple clips at the same time and they're loaded in the property bin, you can see them in the dope sheet at the same time. So here, if we want to combine these two, and now we can use our hotkeys just like we do in the viewer, we can hit F and that'll scale to show us everything we want to see. So now say if we wanted to align these dead together, 
and maybe trim off some handles. That's how we would do that on the input side. So that's just a, that's a handy trick. Usually we're doing it numerically and we have very specific timings we're trying to hit. But if you're working a little bit more freeform, the dope sheet's really good for aligning clips temporally. Uh, another couple of clips that I wanna, or another couple of tools I just wanna talk about is frame hold. So say you wanna use just one, one single frame, instead of loading that as a individual image out of an image sequence, you can just apply a frame hold and then tell it what number frame that you want to apply. So we'll say, you know, five, eight, nine, six, one, six, zero. So that'll allow us to hold that frame and it'll hold it for as long as we need. Um, that's another reason where frame range actually becomes useful because you can use frame hold in conjunction with frame range. So it'll create an image that holds over a very specific range. And then that again ties into the append clip. A pin clip allows you to put multiple clips together one after the other without having to go into the dope sheet and very manually align them all. Say you're working on clips that the length is actually changing. You know, you don't want to align them all and then you go and you change the first one and now you have to ripple that to all the others. You can use a pin clip to do that for you. And you just use that in addition to the frame range tool. So basically, as soon as you connect the first input, it will create another input on the side. And then whatever is in number one will play first. And as soon as you hit number, as soon as it runs out of frame range, it'll then start playing whatever's piped into input number two. And you can do some dissolves and some fade ins and fade fade outs on that as well. Um, but that's actually a really useful tool if you're if you're designing composites that are using clips that are ganged together or you want them to play in specific orders um, a pin clip is great for that you know it also works really good for breakdowns and other things and then lastly regarding time I want to talk about a couple of the retime tools so there's retime retime is the most bare bones retime tool inside nuke and it basically allows you to set a speed and then what your before and after frame handling is as well as a filter method um, you know, it does well for speed ups in some cases, or if you just need to see something fast, I actually usually use retime in concert with one of the other more heavy tools because it allows me to quickly see what's going on. And then I can use those settings to apply to one of the heavier optical flow tools. So next up we have Oflow. Oflow and Kronos are functionally very similar in terms of how they work. They have different methods. So they have frame, which is just, it picks the nearest frame and rounds to it. Blend uses frame blending to blend two adjacent frames together. And motion, which is actually using optical, optical analysis to rebuild a frame for you. Uh, Kronos uses a little bit more modern architecture. Um, it also has additional inputs if you're doing some work with vectors and some other, you know, other passes. You can use that to refine your your optical flow rebuild of that clip. And you can see here, input range is also important for these tools, and they're wanting to read whatever your input is.